And this is why this, this is why Ali Dawa he have his videos about uh, what uh, having secret wife. Why? Because if they have a wife, a uh, second wife, and the wife she find out, you know, you can, you can imagine what would happen. You know, they are cowards. Literally, they are cowards. They don't dare to tell their women, "I'm going to have a second wife," and then. He is scared now from the second wife too because he might have the third wife. So he will make a secret wife. The third wife, the second wife, she will not know about the third wife. And the first wife, she will not know about the second wife. And the third wife will not know about the fourth wife. Me, hijab, Brother Sattaj, the would online detect the test. And they said the following questions. Would you love your wife? Yes, pass. Would you die for her? Yes, pass. If your wife was okay, would you get a second wife? Yes, pass. There is not a conflict between a man loving his wife mm -hmm. and a man wanting to be polygamous. I agree. Look, I get the polygamous part. I get the whole wanting to have more intimacy with more than one woman. Yeah, that's but so this is the whole uh, purpose of the marriage. They call it marriage, but nothing but the prostitution and hooker shin and ifar shin. The whole purpose is the man, he want to have many uh, multi intimacy. With many women in the same time and this muslim woman she is not ashamed to say that she's proud of it as you see anyway it looked like we don't have any customers for today we have only one and he was funny uh, yeah i don't see anyone and for some reason the chat is frozen for me is the chat is frozen Okay, now it's working. All right, guys. I hope uh, next time we will have a better, you know. You know, I want to have a Muslim who you can have a conversation with him. But as you see in those Mohammedan, they, I mean, they are, they are just, you know, they claim, like this guy, he claimed he is over 50. But the second he starts talking, he is talking like a teenage. Like you need to ask the scars. We go to the scars. He don't want to. You don't want the scars. I am not a scars. You need to see the scars. Okay, let's go to the scars. Now he don't want to accept the scars. So they play games in order to avoid the embarrassment. But in fact, when they play games, that is confirming the embarrass embarrassment, not the opposite. The embarrassment is confirmed. They don't want us to open their books. Their book is nothing but a sex cult. Sex cult. You know, God, he gave a human being uh, gifts, joys. Sex is one of them. Sex is supposed to be a joy, but not a curse. But sex can be curse on you if you use it in the wrong way. Curse, you know, uh, 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 sexual relationship can bring you a horrible disease. And I believe strongly that those are curse from God. If a man and one woman, they are together all the time forever, that's it. You will never have sexual disease. You will notice that sexual disease happen for those who do commit a lot of fornication and or homosexual. And you know, sexual diseases are very horrible. If you don't believe me, search right now in Google and you will see pictures will make you hate sex. And if I type now, but I cannot show because it's going to show private parts, you will see the pimples and you will see, the, I mean, the, and, and the puzz and the color and disgusting. And actually, I use those always uh, like somebody, like once a person, he sent me an email saying, you know, like he is obsessed with, 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 you know, there's, you know, he lived like in a society, obviously, where sex is everywhere, you know. So he said, what I will do? I mean, the woman is all, all around me and it's so easy and etc. So I told him, do nothing. Go print those pictures. I will send you a link. Print them and put them in the top of your bed, around your bed. Let us see how much you will have sex. So, when you do wrong, you will get wrong. 
when you do right you will get right so six is not a curse it's not a curse it's a gift for you to enjoy it and to have a family and to have a children this is the purpose of it actually but if you are going to live for sex sex will kill you and will give you a stress you cannot imagine horrible stress and sooner or later even with medicine you would die and if you live is going to suck your income just to fight that disease which mostly going to, going to stay for you some of them they stay with you forever you can't get rid of them so Islam obviously is a sexual cult even their heaven is about sex their earth is about sex their heaven is about sex and violence and money for sure same time they try to promote their religion by lying and this is additional proof that Islam is from the devil why somebody he is a religious the second we say a religion we assume like okay I speak to a priest he's a Hindu priest what I assume from a Hindu priest even though I do not know much about Hindus but I assume the second you say a priest that this guy have a good ethic he don't teach people to lie and to steal and to kill yeah that's what we assume in Islam no is the opposite their priest they teach people to kill and to steal and to lie as long you are lying for the right one as an example a man he can lie to his wife a wife she can lie to her husband a Muslim lie he can lie supposedly to fix things between friends even even when they fix it they have to lie about it which you know lie cannot fix anything because sooner or later they will find out it's a lie and you can lie to your enemy and that's what the Muslim they do they use taqiyya they lie to us so Islam is a very satanic demonic cult promoting recruiting people by sex and money and literally money the Quran says well and you can buy those who their heart in a clean toward Islam and Muhammad himself he bought a family the whole family of uh, 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 of a man who is a warrior he bought them so they can convert to Islam they don't want to convert to Islam but Muhammad is not strong to fight them so what he did he offered them a lot of money and this is part of Islam to give money to someone to convert to Islam if you go to chapter 9 verse number 60 you will see it. Chapter 9, verse number 60. Where he bought the family of Abu Sufyan. And he bought them by money, by gold and silver. And they converted to Islam. And later this family, they killed Muhammad family. This is how faith is religion is. But anyway, I'm you know I'm like these days many things, many good things happening. Uh, I see like always good news. I see more Muslims exposing Islam, ex-Muslims making videos. Uh, Muslims are excited to have some uh, like. Uh, uh, pimps and you know trashy people to convert to Islam but you will notice that those who leave Islam are usually the quality uh, from their side they get the trashy and not only that maybe you do not know that even people who convert to Islam tomorrow they might be the worst enemy if you remember there's a guy his name is Ishmael he called himself Ishmael isn't this is not his name uh, this guy me myself I made videos about him exposing his lies his lies I mean this guy he was mental he lied to convert people to Islam if you remember once he made a video this is many years ago I mean we are talking maybe 12 13 years ago About when he go in the in the in the in the supermarket, oh, this is the wrong one. Hold on. When he go in the supermarket, this guy. 
Allah give him uh, each time he go brother to the supermarket uh, uh, he you know, he know as an example he forgot his wallet and now he have to pay seven dollars and sixty cents I remember even the number and then he look uh, you know he does no wallet with him and then the brother Alhamdulillah Allah he put his hand in the pocket and he found exactly six dollars and seven cents and I was so upset from this guy you know I mean and I was saying to myself what's wrong with those people and then this guy he converted to Islam for more than 16 years every day with a new video fighting Christianity exposing Christianity the Bible is wrong etc and then look now he's wearing a cross this is a new video he's wearing a cross now do you see it but what happened is the revolution in this guy family the uh, life he did learn Arabic perfectly I was surprised how good his Arabic is when he read the Quran he read the Quran in a perfect way so this guy really was studying from all his heart and now he become a number one enemy to Islam and that make it more horrible for Muslim and then suddenly all the Muslim they start saying he is a fake Muslim he was fake he never converted to Islam 16 years as a Muslim he never converted to Islam Muslim they share his videos everywhere just because he left Islam hi now. and welcome to another video Dear Muslims, you believe the spirit who revealed the Qur'an to Muhammad was the angel Gabriel. But have you ever investigated and asked yourself, was it actually Gabriel who appeared to him? Fortunately, we have authentic reports of how the angel Gabriel appears to people as recorded in the Bible long before the time of Muhammad. So we can use these earlier historical accounts and compare and judge whether or not Muhammad actually had encounters with the true biblical angel Gabriel or with some other spirit. When we make this comparison, you'll be shocked to discover that when you read the Bible and the Quran, you are actually reading about two totally different Gabriels, two totally different spirits. Due to the fact that the Bible came long before the Quran, let's start with the Bible. Starting with the Old Testament, it records two incidences of Gabriel's appearance to Daniel. We read in Daniel chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. So anyway, to make it simple, now this guy, the Muslim, they took him to Saudi Arabia. They taught him Arabic. They taught him Islam very well. And this is why he left Islam. So what would happen to the Muslims if Andrew Tetz, he leave Islam? The Muslim, they will say, see, we know he's the Muslim. Even if he stay as a Muslim for 16 years, many who convert to Islam sooner or later, they will leave Islam. And then they will start, this guy actually is doing a good job because now he speaks Arabic very well. He read Arabic very well and he study and they spend their money on him teaching him for free. They send him to Saudi Arabia, scholarship, he joined the universities in Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, learn perfect Arabic. And now, they, and now what they say, there's a million video exposing don't convert to Islam, exposing Ishmael, he's a fake Muslim. Quote, and I heard a man's voice from Ulay calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. And he came near the place where I was standing. I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Then he touched me and raised me to my feet. The other Old Testament incident is in Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 to 22. Quote, While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight, about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. Now we turn to the New Testament, which records another two incidences of Gabriel's appearance to people. Anyway, you can watch his videos. Uh, if we go to his Hi, channel. and welcome to my Patreon mission. 
Our police, militaries, and secret intelligence agencies are not enough to stop the spread of radical Islam. We also need a strong education and research to confront Islam at its ideological roots. All right. And look, now he is doing, uh, uh, he is doing teaching in churches. That's fun. <laughs> I mean, is, isn't it amazing how life is really funny? I mean, this guy was so excited to teach about Prophet Muhammad, how good he is, how wonderful he is. And I could not believe it when I saw his videos first time. I mean, how, how crazy. I mean, it sounds like when you convert to Islam, you are possessed. You know, you know what I mean? You are truly possessed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, good for the Muslims. Here he is getting baptism. This is five years ago. It looks like he is getting baptism. Do I make fake Quran? Prove that the Quran is corrupted. Conflicting text variant. Yeah, you see, you see, Muslim, what you did. And you will notice this guy uh, when he when he have a Islamic channel he can have advertising now he cannot YouTube don't give him advertising do you notice know when he was a Muslim they can he can have advertising over his videos he left Islam there is no advertising in his videos hi and welcome to my video Proof the Qur'an is Corrupted, Conflicting Textual Variants, Part 2. In Part 1 of this series, I did a comparative analysis between the dominant Hafs version of the Qur'an and the lesser-known Duri version. Here in Part 2, I'll be making an even more important comparative analysis of the Qur'an using the Hafs and Warsh versions. Why is this more important? Well, it's because there are literally tens of millions of Muslims using the Warsh version of the Qur'an. According to page 199 of the book, An Introduction to the Sciences of the Qur'an by Muslim scholar Yasir Qadi, after the Hafs version, the second most dominant Qur'an is the Warsh version. As you see here, about 3% of the Muslim world today reads this version, particularly in Algeria, Morocco, parts of Tunisia, West Africa, and Sudan. Now, 3% might seem like a small number, but out of a population of approximately 1.7 billion Muslims, it's actually a large number. And because the Hafs version is read by 95% of the Muslim world, while 3% reads the Warsh, I will therefore be making a comparison that affects 98% of the Muslim world. Now, before I begin, let me remind you, as you saw in part one... Anyway, you can go to his channel, it's called Don't Convert to Islam. Because his previous channel, it was Convert to Islam. So he switched, he changed the name from uh, Don't Convert to, from Convert to Islam to Don't Convert to Islam. Yeah, and for sure the Muslims, they attack him severely because, uh, and they say he is, he is a liar, he is a fake Muslim. He never was a Muslim brother. Yeah. Uh, but if you watch my videos against him when he was a Muslim, you will not believe it, you would die laughing. It was a very good comedy. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, well, it's very normal. I mean, even like in a Christian, sometime if somebody leaves Islam, we will say like he never been Christian. But this is true. But this guy, they can say really he never was a Muslim because this guy was making videos every day about how amazing the Quran is. Every day, every day. I mean, this guy, he like his 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 possessed with Islam. He was young. I mean, and and now until now he's still young, but he was really young. I mean, sixteen years ago. Imagine. So he was very young, and uh, he you know he he come with weird like as an example. Uh, he says in Islam there is miracle not only in Christianity. I remember one of his video. He says that his cousin she is in South Africa. Uh, uh, she saw an angel and the reason that he's an angel because he's white and there's no white people in South Africa when I heard that I died laughing you know it, the, what is the proof that he is an angel 
because she saw a white man and at that time there was no white people in South Africa so imagine if we say 16 years ago there was no white people in South Africa that would be fun isn't it anyway uh, but at the end of the day people they decide where to go there is people they decide to go to the garbage and there's people they like to go to the flower what I can read about Muhammad being infidel because many Indonesian claim uh, there are Muhammad they are from Muhammad tribe how somebody is Indonesian is from Muhammad tribe how, how that can happen <laughs> this is another scam anyone want to attach himself to this scam Muhammad so you will see the king of Morocco he is descended from Muhammad Saddam Hussein descended from Muhammad uh, the king of uh, Jordan descended from Muhammad al Qaddafi is descended from Muhammad uh, the Indonesian they are descendant but the Quran says Muhammad was not the father of any of your men so how they are descended of Muhammad and the, 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 the family of Muhammad, they are all killed. Even the, the, his fake daughters, they are not his daughters like Fatima. Her kids, they died. So what to what kids? And, you know, you will see a lot of those scammers. They claim to be, you know, this has became very popular from the time of the Ottoman. The Ottoman, uh, to make money, the caliphate, they are very corrupt. So you, they, they created like a kind of a department. You can seek a title title so let us say uh, you want to you want to get the title of basha 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 is like a noble you send let us say 1000 100000 piece of gold to the caliphate he will give you the title of basha this way you are protected by the government you are respected in the society and you have your own place uh, and you can own villages if you have the money uh, same for the the like the the one descended from Muhammad. So they start buying those certificate. You send money, they send you a certificate that this man is a son of etc. They create for you that a chain of of, of sons, son, 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 and they find you at the end coming from Muhammad. Our friend, do they they do look uh, Asian? Those the ones who they claim they are from Muhammad. Do they look Asian or they look like people of Yemen? If they look Asian, obviously they are Asian. Same time, how somebody migrated from Yemen, he is descended from Muhammad. Somebody told you that Muhammad from Yemen? Is Muhammad from Yemen? The people of Yemen, they are not even Arab. They are, most of them, they are from Ethiopia. This is why Yemeni people, they are they look totally different from those who they are living in Saudi Arabia. Like unless you are in the south of Saudi Arabia, which is Yemen, like Jizan. They are skinny, very thin. They have certain kind of face. They don't look like the people of Saudi Arabia. Let me show you uh, how the, the original Yemeni look like. Until now, they are naked, actually. And until now, they are savage. Nothing, nothing changed. Uh, okay, this is... Those are the Yemeni. Look at them. Until now, they are naked. They don't cut their hair. They don't take shower. Uh, uh, look at them. Those are the Yemeni people. And look, the, the bullets all over, you know, uh, kill each other, slaughtering each other, very violent drugs. Uh, look at this. Those are the Yemeni. Is that how those uh, people in Indonesia look like? The second they got little money, they go and buy a clashing cough. And the second there's a fight between two people, 50 people die. 
No police, no government, no etc. Eh, you know. No, this is Yemen. Those are Yemen. Those are the people of Yemen. They don't have shoes in their in their uh, look kids kids they are carrying Klashenkov. Look at this. He's not even maybe six, five, seven years old. All of this is a lie, my friend. How people they are coming from Yemen and Indonesia, that's a lie. That's a lie. Same time, even if you are coming from Yemen, zero people from Yemen, they are coming from Muhammad. Muhammad have no family. He have no descendant. Even the Quran says so. Yeah, this is Yemen. And drugs is their food. They have something called al qat They keep it in their mouth all the time. Anyone you see, the, the, this is a this is a business. Anyone want to claim an owner, he claimed to be from Muhammad. But all of us we knew that Muhammad is a scam back. This is why you will not find one Arab Christian claiming to be descended from Muhammad, because this is not an owner. Muhammad is a very bad person. But you will see somebody from Somalia claiming to be from Muhammad, from Iraq claiming from to Muhammad. Even Saddam Hussein, who he claimed to be from Muhammad, uh, his tribe originally they are coming from India. Saudi Arabia, most of them they are Indian. Uh, Qatar, Emirat, Bahrain, most of them they are Indian. Especially from Qatar, Qatar and Bahrain. Bahrain is mixed with the Persian, but Qatar is way more Indian. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm, see, I'm I'm not joking, you know, the, if you look at the map, if you think India is far, India is very close to Saudi, Saudi Arabia. I mentioned that many times. If you look at the Prince of Qatar, you know, don't he look exactly, or Kuwait, or, you know, don't he look like from somebody from Pakistan? Just ask yourself, even their mustache, even their hair, their color, I mean, everything. They are from Pakistan. And Pakistan is just across the street. This is how the, 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 the father of this one, the prince, he used to be the one before him. He's still alive. This is, this is how they look like. Isn't it, this is a person is an Indian? Just ask yourself how this is an what what when they say Arab, what does that mean? Is this person an Indian or what? Their face, their mustache, their hair, they're Pakistani. This is his son, the same. And this is after marrying women who they are supposed to be pretty, so they can like, you know, their, their look change. But in reality, they are the same. Just take off the Arabian clothes and you will see that they are totally, totally Indian, you know? Well, DNA, I mean, uh, I think all nations are mixed at the end of the day. I don't know about the DNA, but you can check out if somebody will give you the DNA test. But I believe strongly, there is nothing called Arab. Arab is not an uh, ethnic. This Middle, this Middle East is very mixed. You know, the Roman was there, the Persian were there, the, uh, the African, the Egyptian, 
the Mongolian, I mean, you name it. But from the look, it's obvious, those are nothing but Indian. The Arab, uh, first of all, uh, as I said, Arab is not an ethnic group. So when somebody says to you, Arab are dark skin, this is not, not, not true. Because even those are not dark skin. Even those are not dark skin. Uh, let us say, uh, you, you might find somebody from the Middle East, he is blonde, depends where he's coming from. So as an example, if you go to uh, Syria, uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, even in Egypt, there is, there is blonde. Why? Because remember, the Roman was there, and Syrian, they are white people. Syrian, Aramaic people, they are white. They are blonde. Uh, the Arab, they are darker skin, but they are not dark skin. They are white still. But they are darker skin, but not dark. Uh, <clears throat> but there is no ethnic group called Arab. Arab is a big fat lie. Never exist. <clears throat> like you know as an example they say to you Yemen right they say to you Yemen is Arab right so why the why the Yemeni their language is not Arab if you go right now and study the temple of al Makkah, you know the, the story of Balkis Balkis you know the, uh, the the queen which mentioned in the Quran mentioned her story in the Quran and mentioned in the Old Testament If we go to the temple of Al Makkah, and this is where Muhammad got in his name, Makkah. This is the temple of Al Makkah. What was the language there? Have nothing to do with Arabic. Absolutely nothing with Arabic, because those people are not Arab. So they say they lie. They say the the Yemeni are Arab. The Yemeni are Arab. Yemen never was and have nothing to do with anything. Have to do with Arab. Yemeni are different people mixed very heavily with African, Ethiopian specifically. And their language is far away from any anything to do with Arab. And actually, just lately they were able to uh, to uh, uh, like uh, uh, read some of uh, writ written in uh, tablet and walls and etc. in this area. And they found the discovery. They used to think that this temple was the temple of the sun. But then, because now they were able to read the language, which have nothing to do with Arabic or any language they knew before, it turned to be that they worship the, the moon. This is the temple of the moon, La. This is the La temple. And the the name actually of Mecca is coming from here. This is the temple of Al Mecca. Uh, in in Arabic or in the like uh, Middle East. Uh, or Aramaic, there is sometimes the same letter like Ka can come as Qa. So Mecca can come as Makkah. As an example, when we say Yeshua, Yeshua in Arabic means Yeshua. But why it is Yeshua? Because in Aramaic, there is two languages, and same as Hebrew, there is old and new. So there is you can say Yeshua, which means the letter S can be seen as a a S, or the letter S can be seen as Sheen. So Yeshua can become Yeshua. Same for like the word Shems. Shems in some area, they say Sams. They don't say Shems. So the letter Seen switched to be Seen. Instead of Shems, we say Sams. Shems means Sun. So Makkah, Makkah is the same as Makkah. And this is where the name of Makkah is coming from. They build this is why if you go to the Kaaba, there is a corner, it's called the Yemeni corner. Why? Because they have a stones from this temple. They place it in the wall of the Kaaba. So people who used to come here to do Hajj, they do not need to go there all the way to Yemen. They go right away to al Makkah, which is a counterfeit city for al Makkah temple.
Anyway, you know, here we are not uh, discussing history. History is a very complicated topic, and uh, uh, and always it is driven by uh, agenda and propaganda. So uh, you cannot really get a real source of history from anyone, I believe, because everybody have his own agenda. So a Muslim, he will not agree with me. A Christian, he might agree with me. An atheist, he might oppose me, might agree. Everybody, you know, so when they write history, I believe, everybody write history according to his propaganda and his belief. Uh, it's very unique to find, uh, let us say, a historian. He don't really care which side he take. He care for what he found. And that is the one maybe we can take him more legitimate. Uh, if he is decent, he don't care if he is being Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha. He care. Uh, this is what I found, and this is what I write. But how you can guarantee uh, that this is the stage of this man? You need to know him personally. Like, you know, when historian they write about the Crusaders, what they say about the Crusaders, all evil stuff. The Crusaders, they were bad. The Crusaders, this is what they teach your kids in school. But reality is, if not the Crusaders, all of us, we will be under the shoes of Muhammad. It's a fact. It is the Crusaders who saved Europe and the world. Otherwise, goodbye freedom, and you are a slave of Allah. Crusaders is the one who saved the world. This is this is the fact. But nobody wanna say. What they teach your kids is the opposite. Crusaders, they were criminals. You know, you ask anyone in any school. The second you say Christianity, they say the Crusaders. Why? Because this is what they teach them in school. This is what history is about, supposedly. Nobody want to teach the truth. They, you know, the since the woke culture took over and the atheists and the Christians, they were very, sadly, you know, they don't really uh, care and they don't fight against them. So they start poisoning the children and the children, they believe that crusaders, they were bad people. Those crusaders, they are the best of us. They defend us and our freedom. Now, for sure, it can be, it can be there's a criminals between them. Why not? I mean, in any war, there's people, they will seek opportunity. But the, the majority of the young men, they, go, they went to war is to defend the faith against the Islamic aggression. That is a truth. While Islam, all of it is for the sake of money. If you remember, Muhammad, he says, attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. You will not find a crusader leader saying, attack the Arabs so we can get the women, the Arab women. This is not what happened. The Muslims attacked Jerusalem. The Muslims, they took our land. We fought back. 600 years after Jesus, never we heard of the crusaders ever. Ever, ever, never. The crusader was a reaction, not an action. But what books of history teach you? That the crusaders are bad. They are disgusting. They are ugly. This is why you need to teach your children right uh, how important the crusader is and maybe one day we need to do crusader again maybe one day we as a christians we have to defend ourselves and go and stand for ourselves we will see uh, that you know uh, history sometimes repeat itself but i want you to teach your children the truth that the crusaders are the best of us not they are not the worst all the stories you see like in movies they made the crusaders fighting salah al-din and they make salah al-din as a good man salah al-din is a rapist salah al-din is a filthy man is a disgusting man in the movie salah al-din is a nice he is a smart he is a genius people love him Salah al-Din killed a lot of Muslims themselves. He killed anyone who opposed him. But in the movie, he is a hero. And this is the mistake. People, they take history from movie, even about Jesus. All those movies about Jesus, full of mistakes and errors. The director, he say, as he wish in the movie. And then you watch the movie and you say, oh, this is what happened then. Because you decide to be ignorant, you decide to learn about history.
from those who hate Christianity. How many of you heard of uh, uh, Richard the Lionheart? We have a, we have a king right now in England. Is he the same? This guy is come back. So you see how 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 countries they change. From Richard the Lionheart, the one who defeated the Muslims, and he taught them a lesson to remember forever. To the scumbag, right now he called himself a king. I don't go by a certain book. Uh, you know, you need to you need to filter yourself. You need to filter, and you need to find where where justice is. Ask yourself, when the crusade. When the crusade came to existence, is it before Islam or after? It's after. When the first time a crusade war happened, is it before Muslims attack or before we attack first? Find the answers, you will find. And then you will find that all reference says that the Christians were defending themselves. It's not the Muslims. It's not the Muslims are the victims. Because the atheist and the Darwinist they start, they launch a long time an attack on Christianity in Europe. And this is what happened to Europe now, right now because of that. Atheism have an invasion, and Christians, because they became so submissive, you know, they don't they don't defend, they don't stand. If you see somebody is insulting the Bible, stand and defend and put him in his place. Get him busted. Show him how stupid he is. Don't sit like a mule. They are making fun of you, and you stand there. Let people hear your voice. Let them see. You see, like in America, we are the majority. Christians are the majority in a massive way. But the bad is, we are not organized. We don't have. We, they don't have a leader, Christian leader in this country. Trump is not a Christian. Trump is a is a, is a businessman. He this guy he worship Mr. Dollar. His God is Dollar. He don't have God. I believe Trump has zero ethic. He is better than Biden. Biden is his God is Satan. Trump, he worship dollar. I don't see too much different. But at least Trump is not going in their direction. You know, that's why we voted for him. But both of them, they have nothing to do with God and Christianity. So the Christian in this country, they don't have really a real leader. They are not organized. Otherwise, they can shake this White House in two seconds. They can make it collapse. If the Christians can be united so this country needs a party for the Christians not Democrat not Republican not green not blue not stupid not for white not for black not for Asian Christians a party and you know you will see many they will say to you we as a Christian we should not involve in politics that is the stupid ones of us they say that because if you don't involve in politics, then they will teach your son how to be a homosexual. They are even given drugs to, to change their gender, just because you decide to be stupid and you decide not to be involved. Why? Because you are de devoted a Christian supposedly. Devoted a Christian is the one who stands for the truth, not the one who put his finger in his mouth. And this is the case in every country. Christians should be organized. Christians should be united. And when you vote, you don't vote for a man. You vote <clears throat> for the value. So go check his history. If he support what, he support who? What he think about homosexuality? What he think about uh, abortion? What he think about uh, Islam? What he think about uh, all things? Then you decide to vote for him or not. Don't vote for a party. Unless this party is a Christian party and stand for what is in the Bible, nothing else. And I pray that in the state one day, they will be, you see, and I'm not born in this country, I'm not involved in politics. So I don't really, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't have the power to establish a party. Otherwise, I will, you know, I will. But, uh, for me, I can be the voice of the truth. Maybe tomorrow, someone young, he will come and he will be the man who establish uh, a Christian party, voice the Christians, 
because you know those in the in the politics they care for you only if you have a power of vote if the Christians are not united and they don't have a voice and they are divided you know who care you know so you need to teach your children from now like as an example if you live in the state how many of you live in the state If you if you live in the state, uh, you know we should teach our children that it's very important for them to involve in politics. In the same time, we should not let teachers in school teaching them unless this is a teacher we know he is a Christian. Don't let your children get their milk from the devil if you think that your children they are going to be under the influence of an evil person you better take him to different school actually there's many families they teach their children at home when a child is in the presence of a teacher for eight or ten hours he come back home and this teacher is a weirdo woko all kind of a crazy stuff your teach your son is lost you have to be careful. Your children today either going to fight with you, I mean in your side, or going to fight against you tomorrow. And that's what the Muslims are doing right now. They're trying to make your children convert to Islam to join jihad with them against you. And instead of sending their own kids to fight in America, they want someone like Johnny Walker. You know Johnny Walker's story? 16 years old, converted to Islam. He joined Taliban. The American came to Afghanistan. They captured him. They convert your son, or like the other guy from Australia, 16 years old too. Suddenly he disappeared. Suddenly they found him making a video in Syria that he is going to do commit suicide. So why they want to lose their kids? They will lose your kids for their war. So your kids is the target. And the man who is today exist, those who vote for Democrat, they are the victims of like your kids today. This is what will happen to your kids after 20 years. They will be like them. So you cannot be Christian and you vote Democrat in USA. If you vote Democrat, you are no Christian. Because everything they stand for is against Christ. So you can fool yourself, you can say, I'm Catholic, I'm Protestant. No, I don't agree with you. All this is stupid things. But you know in your heart that you cannot support homosexuality and you are a Christian. You cannot support abortion and you are a Christian. You cannot praise Muhammad and you are a Christian. This is far away from Christianity. You cannot support, you know, giving kids drugs and make them believe that the male is a female and the female is a male. So if you are a foolish man or a woman who teaching your kids that or making them believe that they are still Christians doing those things, you are you are satanic. You are just satanic. And you can say, oh, I'm a good guy. No, you are not. The Bible is the judge. A person he claimed to be Christian, what does that mean? Somebody he followed the scriptures of Christ. The scriptures is there, clear. It's very clear cut. I saw like a video of a woman, she claimed that she is a Christian minister, but she is LGBT. How you can be a Christian minister and LGBT? <laughs> so, you know, those people, they, they, they repeat a lie and they believe in the lie. They repeat a lie and then the lie become a truth for them. They are the same as the Muhammadan. It's like somebody, he kept repeating a lie, a man, he kept repeating a lie saying, I'm a woman, 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 I'm a woman. And then after repeating the word that he's a woman 1,000 times, he thinks now he's a woman. He starts wearing a skirt. But no, you are not a woman. It doesn't matter how many skirts you wear.
Teach your children and don't let the foolish ones fool them. Anyone have a question? Yeah, you cannot be you cannot be a drug dealer and Christian. You cannot be a whore and Christian. You cannot be a, a, a child molester and you are Christian. You cannot be homosexual and Christian, etc. The list is so long. Anyone who say the opposite, you know that he is a big fat liar. Arun saying, Christ never say the word about homosexuality. He hang out with Mary the Magdalena. Uh, you should not be throwing stones. Arun, I say to you, you are a stupid idiot. Isn't it Jesus is the God of the Jews and he is the God of the Christians? Isn't it Jesus is the God who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Arun, you are a donkey, my friend. Same time, Maria the Magdalena, Jesus said to her, Sin no more. He did not hang out with her. Hang out with her. <laughs> hey, uh, listen, Maria, you want to go out to the bar? <laughs> hey, Maria, <laughs> you know, you want to go to the bar? Yeah, see, those are the evil ones who try to fool you, make you believe that Jesus was a hippie. He never said a word about homosexuality. In fact, you are a big fat liar. The Bible have a clear story about what God did to them. He burned the whole city, and that is Jesus, my friend. Same time, if we go to 1 Corinthians, it says that drunken, homosexual, fornicator, liar, etc., they will not enter heaven. And that is from Jesus. So you are stupid again. This is an example, actually, what we see from this guy, Arun, is an example of how they fool you and how they try to manipulate and they say Jesus never spoke anything about homosexual. That's false. Jesus did not need to repeat what he said already. And the punishment happened already. And the Jews, they knew exactly the punishment for that. So it's already established law. Established law, which Jesus, Jesus he said, I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, to complete. Is that correct, Christians? Is that correct? So Jesus, he did not change the law. He came to complete the law. And the law already have a punishment for homosexuality. But this is an example. You are I'm splitting hair. Well, you are splitting your 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 butt to you know to to cover the the words with with your fart. Do we have a punishment for homosexuality in the Old Testament? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Where the law is coming from? From God. Who is the God? Jesus. Isn't it? Jesus says, "I've been given the." authority over all flesh so you are stupid again you know when Joe Biden your stupid president he make a law when he make a law do he delete the old law no he don't unless it says I delete the old law so when Jesus he come he did not delete any law he said I will complete I will do more The Old Testament and New Testament give different condemnment. Well, my friend, you are needed again. Here we go. Guys, the New Testament did not give. Eh. The New Testament did not give. He decided. <laughs> This is an example of those Democrats, you know, they are they are weird though, and it's stupid, and they think that we do not know our book. All right. They think we do not know our book. 
Let us see what our book says. All right. Let us read together. And then people will laugh at you. First Corinthians 6. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers? Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor... Did you hear it? Those are the homosexual. So all those lists will not inherit the kingdom of God. So my friend, you are a stupid idiot. Don't tell me about Jesus. Those who don't follow the Bible, they are going to go to hell. Here we are not politically correct. If we are hurting your feeling, well, use some, uh, take some aspirin. This is our book. You like it, like it. You don't like it, take a hike. So if you are a fornicator, if you are a thief, if you are an adulterer, if you are a, a homosexual, or if you are an abuser of blah, 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 all the list, you will not go to heaven. All right? You should, uh, you know, Aydawa uh, and Muhammad Hijab CP and review because I'm trying to know you will respond to their question. You did not get chance to answer. News Digital, are you a Muslim, my friend? Chance to the answer, chance to answer. Who okay, cares? I mean, all those, all those years we are answering, I need to chance to answer. We made the videos about it and we got them busted. Look like you came to the party so late. So be careful with those fraud people who try to fool you, saying that Christianity is not against and Jesus never mentioned. That's, that's absolutely false. The Bible is so clear that uh, uh, fornication, even drunk, to be drunk will not make you receive heaven drunk drunk you know drunk you know what drunk i cannot judge no i can my friend see the messiah he said don't judge which means don't play god but the messiah said from their fruits you shall know them so what we judge, we judge the fruit. So if you are drunk, I can say to you, if you are a person who get drunk every day, I can say to you, you will not go to heaven. If you are a fornicator, I can say to you, you will go to heaven. I'm not God, but the Bible says it clearly. If you do those things, you will not inherit heaven. Very simple. Correct? All right? There is no need for John judge. I am judging your fruits. So the Bible says, if this is their fruits, they will go to hell. Don't fool yourself. And let Joe Biden then save you.
I mean, Arun, your answer sounds like you, are, you have a mental issue, my friend. I'm writing humans all the time, but you think that uh, homosexual is okay? <laughs> you can write songs for God as much as you want, so you will go to hell. The Bible speaks about people like you who worship God by their, you know, by their lips, but their heart is empty. Because the one who obeyed with the Christ, the one who obey Christ, is the one who go to heaven. No, not the one who disobey. So it doesn't matter what you. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, how much you praise God you, as you claim. Doesn't matter really how much you praise God. No. The Messiah even said to them, those who did miracle in his name, they said, sir, to her, sir, you know, uh, Lord, we had done miracle in your names. He said, depart away from me. I do not know you. I do not know you. God made you a gay? No, my friend, God did not make you a gay. God made you a man and you decide to play with, your, with, with yourself. Guys, God made him a gay. Yeah, here we go. God. God made me again. He is blaming God for that too. When God he created Adam and Eve, why Adam he did not say to God, "Hey, I like man." <laughs> oh, my. how do you? How do we know that the Quran, the reason? From the oh, from the Quran, the reason for Jesus his crucifixion. Allah know that Jesus said he is God because of that. Allah did not does not mention the reason for the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, you know we don't care really what the Quran says, but we use the Quran to prove the opposite for Muslims about what the Quran is saying. Anyway, Arun, I advise you, my friend, to repent. Otherwise, the Bible is so clear. That people who do fornicate, people who they are thieves, people who they are breaking the command of God, they will go to hell. So don't tell me, this guy, he keep asking me, are you a Syrian? Are you a Syrian? Are you a Syrian? I mean, people, they have issues, my friend. I mean, my friend, John, is it important if I am a Syrian or from the moon? Is that really important for you? Let us say I'm a Syrian. What that would do to you? Are we going to be friends now? Do you want to go and play in the football with me now? Because I'm, if I'm a Syrian? What's wrong with people? You do not design God as you wish, Mr. Arun. I feel sorry for you, my friend. They lie to you. They say to you that Jesus loves you. No, he don't. No. Jesus, he warned us even from having sex with the woman. Women, if she is not ours. He said, if your eye will mislead you, unblock it, take it off. And this is about a woman, not a man. So don't fool yourself. Repent, repent before it's too late. The judgment day is coming. Your life sooner or later will be taken away from you. And then you will you will stand in sh with shame in the front of God. You will be full of shame if you if what you did to yourself. Uh You know, in fact, me, myself, if I have a daughter, I will not even let her marry a man if he never serve in the army or he have an, a, a, like a, a real man training. You know, I mean, you, you must be a man to marry. A man is not a person just have a penis. It's not enough. Donkeys have penises too. This is not what make the man man. So when you say to me you are gay, what does that mean? I mean, even the gay, 
is not is not true. The word gay means happy. Are you happy? So look what those gays they did. They stole the rainbow. The rainbow is a biblical word. It's a promise of God. That is our word. You stole it, you put it in your flag. You will be punished for that. This is from the Bible. God will punish you. You took the word gay. The word gay used to be exist in the Bible. Now nobody use it no more. And I never saw somebody is a he's a gay is happy. Are you? You are not. Look at you what you are doing. You are striking everywhere and you wanna put the flag every honestly you are not happy. Because if you are happy with yourself, you will not do all this noise. Do I need to go and put a flag in the street because I'm a Christian? What does that mean? That means I'm, you know, if I want to show off that, you know, we are the majority. We are the massive majority. So imagine if we decide to put our flags, our flags all over your house. So you obviously, you are not comfortable with yourself. You are angry. You are not happy. And you are crying. God did not comfort you, my friend, because you are committing sin. Repent. I do not need to place my my flag of Jesus in the street, you know, everywhere to tell them, okay, oh, you know, I can go preach the gospel, no problem. I can speak to people, no problem. But, the, you know, when you say you are gay, what does that mean? You are telling me how you do sex. That, that's what gay means. You know, the, the way you do sex, what you do, what you do in the bedroom. Why I need to know what you do in the bedroom? Should I say to you, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a street. Like imagine people in the street, everyone, he write in his t-shirt, I'm straight. He's, he write, he's a gay. She's right. She's lesbian. That would be funny. <laughs> hey, I have sex with women. <laughs> Sheikh Othman it challenged me. Okay, give me his Skype. I will call him right now. Your shake, my friend, is a potato. He doesn't even know how to read this Quran. We, we laugh at your shake, the ketchup boy. Did he find the Messiah in the notebook? <laughs> Did he find the book of Uthman? When this Christian young man, he, he you know, he challenged Uthman, he challenged all the Muslims in San Diego to find one Quran, give me $5,000. Your stupid shake, Uthman, he brought a book, the same book saying, this is cannot be the book of Uthman. <laughs> So imagine if he cannot debate this guy. I mean, those those guys, they know nothing about Islam. They, they made him look so bad and they are kids. Imagine if he debated Christian Prince. This is why he will never dare to do it. Give me a Skype. I will call him right now. Give me, give me. Anyone here know his Skype? Honestly, anyone knows his Skype? I will, I will call him. Not, not now. Now it's very late. Actually, you know, he's in, in, uh, in California. So yeah, it's still late. Give me his Skype. Let us call him right now. Let us see who is running from whom. <laughs> Any shake you want, shaky booty, give me his Skype and I will call him live on air. And let us see who is running. Who is the coward? The ketchup boy. Even the Muslims are making fun of him, potato. Don't you see what the Muslim they say about your Sheikh Uthman? He don't even know how to read the Quran. I mean, if the Muslim, they start, you know, like uh, attacking Christian Prince, I understand. But the Muslims, even they are making fun of Uthman. Hmm. Those are your Muslim websites. Those are your Muslim channels. Al Islam production. Salafi Osman ibn Farooq, what a joke. 100 Arabic mistake of miskeen Salafi. <laughs> they made a video. You know, I mean, this has took a lot of work, you know. I mean, this guy, obviously, he, he, he make mistakes more than, more than I mean, his errors is more than the correct one. Have you ever heard of a sheikh? He cannot read his Quran. I mean, how, and he claimed that he have a master degree too. So they, in, in 40 minutes, 40 minutes, they have 
a hundred Arabic mistake in the Quran in the Quran this guy is adding word to the Quran is not there he is taking words from the Quran he is adding word from the Quran and you are asking me to debate this potato bring him give me his guy that will be the most funny time ever I would love it all of those potatoes who claim they can debate me they are on a way otherwise here we go I'm here you know Sheikh Uthman, Sheikh Uthman, let us see Sheikh Uthman when he read. Ya yuhan nas, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem, alladhi khalaqaka, wa sawaka, wa adalaka. And getting up from it. Ya'ani yarfa'huma ila khudul mankabayhi, aw... Those who speak Arabic, they will die laughing, you know? <laughs> You know what? My Chinese is better than your. What the heck is that? Are you copying from a Chinese movie like Chi Ho He? What? This is Arabic, and look, he is reading there. I mean, look, you know, and those people they should be easy for them to read. Why? Because they use the Urdu language, which means they use Arabic letters already in their language. So all what you need to do, just connect the letters together. Even if you don't understand the language, if even if you don't understand the word, study should be able to read better. He cannot even read it. Look. <laughs> you see, this is a video made by you Muslims, not by me. You can check this channel, I have nothing to do with me. Those are 100% Muslims. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. This is why they will never dare to get it close to me. I mean, imagine this guy, you know, he will speak to me in two minutes, you know, people will be like laughing at him. Yeah. You know, I we will come anyone who claim to be a sheikh, but obviously those all of them, they are just kids. You know, they are just doing business. What is the reason God created life? Uh, does it ever specify? You know, the Bible is so clear about why God created life. Uh, how we know, you know, when the Bible says, the Lord said, for God, he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. So God, when this is why we Christians, when we pray, what we call our God, we call him our father. And that is telling you that God, because he loved to share his glory, he created the children. Those are the humans. He did not want them to go to hell. He did not want them to suffer. He didn't want them to, to do wrong or, you know, to, to they want them to be happy. But he gave them free will. Free will, it turned to be not good for us because we are not good. Which, you know, here we go, as you see, one, he want to be homosexual. The other one, he want to be lesbian. The other one, he want to be a drug dealer. The other one, he want to be fornicator. The other one, you know, free will. So God created life so we can enjoy and he share with us his glory as his children. Otherwise, God do not need us. He have no need for us. And if you look around you, you will see, you know, everybody, like all, all religion, they seek the purpose of life, supposedly, right? I believe that the purpose of life is to die for now the purpose of life now is to die what does that mean we are born to die that is our purpose it's a purpose we do not choose which means the second you are born by birth you choose to die but it's not a choice you made it is a nature of sin you know the bible says the wage of sin is death so the purpose of life for now is death however 
the purpose of life can change. God, he gave you a choice. If you want to be with me, you can live forever. So the Messiah, he said, whoever believes in me and I will live. That will be the purpose to live for eternity with God. Otherwise, by nature, the purpose of life is death. The way it is now. <clears throat> but I'm not saying that God created you to die. No. You chose death. Your father chose death in heaven. And you inherited his death in earth. Because you are not born in heaven. This is why it's called earth, not heaven. All right. <clears throat> You know, like you see some people who they are confused, they try to uh, look for purpose of life by doing yoga, you know. And I found that yoga never, you know, teach you about the purpose of life. Yoga is just a deception. I'm not against the yoga as a sport. I believe any kind of a sport is healthy to give your body, you know, the flex and uh, uh, stretch your muscles, uh, to keep you in good shape. Anything like that is good. But the yoga, the one supposedly focusing in something called the spiritual, I find it very unspiritual and deceiving. Because yoga in general is focusing on what? That you focus on yourself. But the purpose of life never was ourself. You see, all of what Christianity teach is to give and sacrifice. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So even God himself, our Lord, he did not do yoga. He was not focusing on himself. If you have love, you don't focus on yourself. If you have love, you focus in saving others. Yoga does not teach you that. Yoga teaches you how to be selfish. How to forget everything around you and focus on yourself. Yoga is a self-worship, not good. You know, when they asked this guy, uh, Sadhguru, about the death of his wife, he said that his wife, she decided her death by yoga. And then you ask yourself, how in the world this yoga is good if a woman in her early age and she have five years old kid, she decide to die by yoga. How good is the yoga then? Sound like what he is saying, that she decided to commit suicide. So is yoga really helping you or yoga? This is the wife of the guru. You know what I mean? The wife of the guru, she, according to him, she killed herself by yoga. So what he is saying to us, that yoga will make you fall into depression to the point you commit suicide. But this is not what they say to us. What they say to us that yoga can solve your problems. In this interview, when they ask him about how his wife, she died, because people, they accuse him that he killed her. He said that she decided her death six months before she died by yoga. And why a woman, she have five years old kid, she would like to die. <clears throat> That's not the good behavior of a woman. She have a child. Right? There's no woman, she will leave her child behind. She is five years old because of yoga. She decided to go. What does that mean? And she is married. And supposedly he claimed that she is happily married. Have you ever heard of a happily married woman? She have a child. She decided to go. So if yoga was good, yoga will not lead this woman to end in such a way. If what he is saying is true. Would you ever street preach? I don't go on street and preach, but if I see somebody 
saying something bad in the street, I get them busted. But I don't go on purpose to preach, no. Like if I'm walking in the street and I see a group of people, Muslims or non-Muslims or Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a sign or etc. I get them busted. But I don't go to preach. Because I have, you know, uh, you see, if we don't have the internet, I would do that in the street because then this is the only option. But uh, why I want to do it? Here I have 100,000 people, you know, can come and listen. Uh, another few hundred thousand people, they will copy my videos. And I have 1,000 people right now, more than a 1,000 watching and listening. Can I do that in the street? No. In the street, you will find two, three, four. And then an idiot, he might try to push you or to scream at you. And, you know, you don't. And uh, like I see a preacher in the street trying to preach somebody come and bring music next to them just to disturb him like the devil, you know, demon. Here, you cannot do that to me. So here it's more, uh, uh, let us say, uh, the purpose of, of what we do is to reach out, right? Here we go. We have people from Indonesia, from Pakistan, from Islamic countries, from Christian countries, from India, from everywhere. <clears throat> Has anyone tried physically fighting you for debating like the way Uthman the donkey tried to fight someone? Well, you know, for me, I'm not, and this is another reason. I don't like to go on the street. I'm a very hot-blooded person, and I'm always armed. So I'm not, I, I don't want to be in such a position because I don't want to lose it and then end in jail. You know, if somebody tried to touch me or hurt me, he will not have happy ending. So I'm not, you know, some people, they, you know, they can manage. For me, you know, you try to do something wrong to me, you know, try to use physical violence against me, you will be badly sorry, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I always, I am armed. I have my guns with me. And it's uh, this is since I was a kid. This is not about uh, now or Islam. No, I mean, always. Since I was a kid, I, I can take the gun, put it pieces together without even my eyes being open. Since I was a kid. <clears throat> so this is another thing. I don't like to be in such a position because I don't tolerate violence. You know, you try to do something wrong, you will pay for it. There are some other people, they don't really. I mean, they don't get angry so fast and they don't, etc. But uh, I'm not that one. Um... Uh... No, it's not about Rambo or anything. You know, I mean, I'm, this is how I am since I was a kid. <clears throat> don't. I, I never I never uh, uh, hurt people, and I don't want to hurt anyone. You want to talk to me? Nice, and, you know, okay. You don't accept what I say, no problem. But you try to hurt me physically, then you get a response. And I'm the kind who get... Uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, in fire so fast. And now, actually, I'm way better than before. You know, I mean, before, it's a different story. Uh, now is way better. You know, now, uh, like, uh, I avoid all kind of uh, uh, issues. But when I was, like, really young, I mean, anything. I mean, if the air walked by, I would have fight with it, if it's necessarily. The Middle East is a very aggressive land, you know, and in the Middle East you learn that if you don't, if you don't stand for yourself, everybody will step on you. So they, either you are under the shoe or you are above the shoe. You choose. There's no, there's no between in the Middle East. <clears throat> in the Middle East, the second they see that you are nice and kind, they will step on you. Here is different. You can be nice and people respect you. Therefore, I do not need to stand for anything. You know, eh, something happened. I will call the police. In the Middle East, police are corrupt. The police, even they may take side of the one who attacked you. Just pay them some money. Very corrupt countries. You know, 
the judge is corrupt. You might be the person who defend his house. A thief come into your house. The thief, he will go home and you go to jail. Welcome to the Middle East. So in the Middle East, you learn that you have to stand for yourself. Otherwise, everybody will eat you. And that's where we are coming from, my friend. What are your thoughts about the country, Georgia, the faith of Eastern Orthodoxy? Well, the Orthodox Church is a very ancient, beautiful church, for sure. Uh, and the Orthodox Church have a great history of liturgy and study and philosophy. However, uh, I believe that Orthodox Church, sadly, uh, they become just a traditional. They don't have too much work. People go to church. They do rituals, you know, the same as, eh, I mean, like every Sunday, something. It's like a social thing. So they are not the same as before, going, preaching, teaching, converting people to, to, to Christianity. They become most likely priests doing their job. And that is not what Christianity is about. So as a church is a wonderful church, as history is amazing history, uh, as work fruits today, eh, not good. <clears throat> uh, any church does not provide fruits is not doing a church work. But the purpose of the church is to bring people to Christ or to keep people with Christ. If a church is became a place of routine, a ritual, that is not a church. That is not church no more. If you don't see people getting baptized and people accepting Christianity and the priest go and preach and tell people about to obey God, if he is just a person, he do a sermon every week, just Sunday, and he do just want to go home, you know, yeah, this is not this is not a priest. All those priests we have in those churches, how many of them? They go live in YouTube to preach the gospel. Very few. Okay, why then? Why they don't do that? Because many of them, they are doing just a job. The reason I am here, because your priest is not here. If your priest doing his job to warn you about all cults, I will not be here. You will not need to listen to someone like me. I am not a priest. Prince, he think they will stop Islam by barking. I don't know, my friend. I can show you that the government of Pakistan keeps sending email to YouTube asking them to block my videos. So if I am not dangerous to Islam or risky, do you think a government of Pakistan will really care for a video, as you said, it can do nothing, harm nothing? Eh, you tell me. <laughs> and if we are parking, as you say, the one is parking is the one who keeps sending an email to YouTube asking them to block my videos. That is your country. That is Pakistan, in the country where people write in the name of Muhammad over their penis. Don't you know? So, and obviously, if we are doing nothing, so why all those Muslims leave Islam after watching my videos? If you go right now to Indonesia, as an example, you will see that a huge number of Indonesians, they are watching my videos. And actually, uh, the funny is, there is people, they are... Uh, 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 watching, there's a channel I found, few of them, they are translating my videos from English to uh, uh, Indonesian. The video I have 10,000 for it in a day, they have 20,000 for it in a few hours. And this is telling you how much the Indonesian Muslims and Christians, they are thirsty to hear the truth about the garbage of Muhammad. So, my friend, we are not only, we think we are stopping Islam. Islam is dead already. Don't you see, uh, Lady Dawa, she confess that Quran have zero miracles. Who is the one who made the Muslim reach that point? Me. I'm the first one ever 
who made books and videos exposing the false scientific miracles of the Quran. And now the Muhammadan, they admit with shame that those scientific miracles are fraud. I, one of the reasons I accepted Islam was the scientific miracles. I'll be honest with you. And now we know that this whole scientific miracles was actually nonsense. Not Why he is saying that? Why the scientific miracle is nonsense? How, how the Muslim reached this point? Do you think the point arrived here from nothing? It's people like me, my friend. We made you Muslims strip. We stripped you from all your lies. So the big one of the biggest lies the Muslim they spread that they have scientific miracle in the Quran. Mm. I am on Jesus' way because he believed in Allah. Well, I don't think you're you know you do not know anything about Jesus because in the Quran the, the word Jesus never mentioned. There is a guy his name is Isa. Secondly. If Isa is the name Muhammad he took, if that is coming from the Greek language, which means Asos, that to prove that your prophet is an idiot, because he took the Greek name, but he never heard of the Hebrew name, which should be the original. I mean, we understand why the Greek, they cannot pronounce certain words, but why Muhammad, he will take the, 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 the Greek name. But anyway, Isa or Aso is the, is the son of Maryam, you know, uh, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she never get married in the Old Testament. She have no children. But some Jews believe that Maryam, she have a son, his name is Isa or Esau. The stupid Muhammad, he thought that Isa, the son of Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is Jesus. This is why in the stupid Quran he says, O oh, sister of Aaron, thinking that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus. So when you say, I follow the way of Jesus, well, Jesus says, I am the beginning, I am the, I'm, I'm the Alpha, I'm the, the, the Omega. Your God, Allah, he copied, he put the same in the Quran. He said, he is the beginning, he is the end. Jesus says, I am the light, Allah copy him. He says, I am the light. Jesus says, I am the truth. Allah, he says, he is the truth. So you will notice that if you are following Jesus, then you should worship Jesus and spit at Allah, for he is a counterfeit thief who came 600 years after Jesus, copying the title of Jesus to himself, and the counter thief is Muhammad. And if you follow Jesus, my friend, you don't follow a child molester like Muhammad. Uh, Jesus said, it's better for you to put a milestone around your neck and throw yourself in the deep ocean from hurting the little ones. Your prophet, one of the most famous accomplishment he have is hurting the little ones. He have sex with the children. Not to forget that he's a fornicator. You know, one of the commandment is not to wish a woman she is not yours. Muhammad, he broke every single commandment of that. Uh, I have so much love for you and respect how I would lie to shake your hand. Greeting from Croatia. Thank you, my friend from Croatia. God bless you, my brother. I don't deserve your, uh, uh, I mean, the kind words. I'm just like any one of you doing little, little, you know. If every one of us, he built the brick in a temple of God, we will have a beautiful temple. If only one person trying to build a temple will take him forever, and maybe he will die before he finish a war. So let us all of us, you know, build the temple of God by putting a brick somewhere. Speak the truth, be brave, Never ever be ashamed of being Christian because this is the best thing for mankind actually. All those perverts who they attack Christ, ask them why you attack Christ, what exactly he did to you? What exactly, why they hate him? <clears throat> did the Messiah lead an army to kill people? Did he, uh, uh, you know, I mean, what he, what, what the Messiah to them? But what happened, that because you are filthy, when you are filthy, uh, you, you, you hate the one 
who make you feel filthy. It's like, you know, I, I met this gentleman from Croatia. Let us say he is wearing white clothes and he is so clean. And I just came from the sewage. And now we have to stand next to each other and take a picture. I would hate him for that. Because look how dirty I am and look how clean he is. So what I do? I try to hug him so I will make his clothes dirty. But the excuse, I want to hug him. And this is how those filthy who hate Christianity, they try to do. So they try to manipulate the value of Christianity. They say to you, you can be a gay and you can be Christian. You can be transgender and you can be Christian. You can be a drug dealer and you can be Christian. You can be a fornicator and Christian. You can be a thief and you are Christian. All of this for what? Because they want to try to make Jesus look dirty. I mean, look at, look at the people who believe in Jesus, how they look like. But those are not Christians. None of those can make Jesus dirty. They are, they are dirty. You cannot make Jesus dirty. You cannot judge the Messiah by me. You cannot. <clears throat> I judge the Messiah by the Messiah. I judge myself by my fruits. The Messiah, he said, by their fruit you shall know them so we can use that even for the messiah look at the fruit of the messiah and then you can come with the judgment and this is how we know that nobody can really judge the messiah and make him look bad for he is the best of the best <clears throat> what type of christianity are you there's no types christianity is against any type christianity is those who believe in jesus and for the lord the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me, not whoever believe in Orthodox or Protestant or Catholic. All those names, they don't count for him. So a person who believe in the Messiah, he will be saved. A person he will not, he will not. Very simple. He don't care for your church name. He don't care which priest he is teaching you. He don't care if you are wearing cross or not. From their fruits. <clears throat> Why you are bowed, bad mouthing against the prophet? Be respectful to other religion. Talk with logic. Okay, I will use your logic, Mr. Uh, Gusan. Guys, when a Muslim he says such a statement for us, isn't it really this is hypocrisy? So they are. He is saying to me, "Don't bad mouth my prophet." This guy, when he prayed to his God five times a day, he cursed the Christians and the Jews. The first thing he do in the morning when he wake up, he say, "Please Allah, please Allah, don't make us like the cursed Jews or the lost Christians." I mean, he just woke up. And he is bad-mouthing the Christians and the Jews. He cannot even have a prayer with his God without bad... He just will, He just wash his mouth and his anus. And now he start a prayer, supposedly. What he do? He bad-mouth the Christians and the Jews. And supposedly, we are the one who they are lost, and the Jews are the one who they are cursed. But if you think about it, you will see that the Jews are the most you know, successful people in the world. And those are the ones cursed. And the Christians are the most blessed people in the world. Why? I mean, look at our life and look at their life. Their life, they have no peace, misery. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, just go to Islamic countries and see. You do not need my description. They are crossing the sea just to come to the country which is not Islamic. Everybody, his dream is, every Muslim who love in a Muslim country is his dream to leave Muslim country. Every single Muslim, even their presidents, their kings, their princes, all the royals who they call themselves royal in the Middle East, when they want to have a good time, they go to Europe. They don't go to Pakistan. Have you ever heard of a royal family from Saudi Arabia or Qatar or they own a palace in Pakistan? They don't. <laughs> they buy a palace in Paris. Not in Pakistan. Why? Is that because you are cursed? 
Is that because you are lucky? And when you say don't bad mouth us, the Quran call us the Christians, call us pigs, monkeys, animals, worst of the creatures, filthy, nudges. And then he said, don't bad mouth us. So my friend, your prophet is a scumbag. You like it or not? If I hurt your feeling, well, go to Amazon and buy some bondage. I don't think you'll find any because the Muslims are out of them. They are duct tape their prophet. Do you see how sensitive the Muslims are? Don't bad mouth our prophet. My friend, I don't bad mouth your prophet. Your prophet is the bad mouth. He is a sewage. In fact, even when you prophet, he take a shower. <clears throat> when you're a prophet, he take a shower. He jump in the water, have dead dogs and women blood from period. Am I bad mouthing? That's what you're saying. Hello, according to Aramaic dictionary, atokom, uh, God is Allah, Allah, ha, Allah. Can you explain this? Hey, my friend, the, in the Aramaic, the, this is the word mean God. This is not the, this is not a name. So there's a huge difference between a word mean God and the last two letters is a sound. It's not even part of the word. So uh, Allah or Allah is a name. It's not a word mean God. Al is a word meaning God, and this is the one you see in the Aramaic. The sound is that the end is like this. They call it like a, uh, like when you know in, in the Old Testament, there is many verses they end with ah, but they have no meaning. It's just like a music, a musical, because they used to sing the Bible. So, uh, all of us we know that the names of Islam is coming originally mostly from the Aramaic. However, Allah is not the same as this word because it is not one word number one secondly it is a name even the muslims agree that it is a name so if there is a word close to it in the aramaic but that word mean god not name you cannot say it is the same word like you know right now in english we say the word god right so English is a strong language now because it's the most spoken language in the world. But, uh, you know, in Arabic, we never use this word God. What God? There's nothing that's called God. So we can use that word, uh, Ilah. Ilah. This is coming from the Aramaic. This is the word you are talking about. But that is not a name. Il is coming from the Aramaic or the Hebrew. Il is a word meaning God. The sound, the eh, Ilah, is just a sound, like to make it holy or special. So the word is il or al. Allah is two words, al and la. La is the name of the God of the Muslims, and that is the moon God. So you are, uh, you are like uh, uh, mixing things between Allah or al. Uh, even like in the Aramaic, those sounds, they are not even part of the word. Allah is the Arabic translation for God. That's false. No. Ask any Muslim, they will say to you, okay, let us prove that Allah is not an Arabic translation for God. Well, how we prove that? From the Quran. Let us do that. <clears throat> Just to show you, I mean, people, they, I feel sorry for people. They have a very poor logic. The word Rab in Arabic is Aramaic too. Rab, Rabbi, you know. So let us read this one. As an example, not limited. Here it says, Inni Allah Rabbul Alameen. I fear Allah, the God of the world. So if Allah is a word meaning God, you don't say I fear God, the God. <laughs> is that correct? I fear, see, the Muslim did not translate Allah and here they say Allah. No, because these are two words. Here is the Rabb, 
That is the word God. Here is Allah. Allah is a person in Islam, is not a word being God. Rab is the word God. So I fear Allah, the God of the word. So if the word Allah means God, that would be a stupid statement. All right. Same time, we can find the same when Allah Himself He spoke about Himself. Uh, when uh, uh, when Musa he came to the tree, even Allah He make it uh, uh, more simple. He says, <clears throat> Let us go here. And that will make it way more clear, you know. Chapter 28, verse number 30. Look what the verse is saying. So supposedly Allah speaking to Moses, what he said to him, I am Allah, the God of the world. If the word Allah is God, it's very stupid to say, I am God, the God. You see, the Muslim, they did not translate the word Allah as God because it's a name. So he said to him, I am Allah, the God of the world. Ana Allah, Rabbul Alameen. And in Arabic, when you say Ana, and then you add, the right away you have to add the name after it. Other example, the Shahada, the Muslim, they say, there's no God but Allah. If Allah is a word meaning God, then we, should, we can say there's no Allah but Allah. But that would be very funny and stupid. All right? <clears throat> Even the Muslims, all of them, they agree that Allah is a name. I mean, I find it very funny that the Muslims suddenly they don't want to consider Allah as a as a as a name. Suddenly, the Allah is just the word meaning God, just to make it fit with the Aramaic. So you don't say that Allah is the moon God. That whole the whole story. You see, this is a duct tape method. So when they want Allah is a unique name, when they want Allah is just a word. Do you see the hypocrisy? Actually, this is why we say why Muslim they got many Allah. A perfect question. Muslim, they have many Allah. Each one of them, he tried to duct tape. He give you a different answer. Not a single Muslim. He give you the correct answer. So suddenly now Allah is just a word mean God. It's not... Uh, I can say there's other people who they are in the Middle East or in Indonesia like Christians. Because the Muslim occupy them, they forced to use the word Allah as a word mean God. But all of us we knew that this is not right. Allah is not a word mean God and should not be used for the word God. Unless you are trying to use the Aramaic language, which is totally different, then you should not say the word Allah. You should say the Aramaic word that will make it fit. Al Ilah, you know, the God, but not Allah. The word Lord does not mean God, the Lord of the world. Whoever say the translation for God through Aramaic is Allah is wrong. I understand the word from what you are saying. Do we have any Abdul would like to join us? They don't know even who is their God. Look at this edit, another edit. He says, the Catholic, they created Islam. <laughs> this is an example of the stupidity, you know, of those people copy paste the internet boys. Catholic created Islam. Yeah, I, actually I saw somebody, he is a growing man and he claimed to be a professor. And he said that Khadija, the first wife of Muhammad, she was a, she was a Catholic nun. I could not believe it, I died laughing. I mean, Khadija, she have three husbands, and she was a Catholic nun, brother. 
And there was a Catholic at that time there? Mm. And they are the one who created Islam. Huh? So who was the crusade? Mm. I think the crusade, they were the Hindus. You are genius. Let us go, Brandon. <laughs> you, are, you will find a lot of donkeys in the internet. Internet is like a big container of aquarium of donkeys. Ah, copy paste, you know, hear this from somebody. And he posted around. That's it, the Catholic. If not the Catholic, my friend, you will be a slave of Muhammad long time. The Catholic is the one who saved you. Uh, it does not have to translate directly to English. Word of God. For it, for it to mean God, it goes to word God's. Yeah, I'm missing your point. Whatever your point is, is stupid. Allah, every single Muslim agree that Allah is a name. Don't be stupid. You see, if the Muslim, they change their mind about the word, if the Muslim, they never believe that Allah is the name of their God, then I will go with you. But if the Muslim themselves, they believe that Allah is a name, who is the stupid you to say to me, it does not say that, CP? <laughs> You know, are you going to redesign Islam as you wish? The Muslim believe Allah is a name of their God. You are coming here to argue and says, no, it's not. You must be stupid donkey. It's not up to you and not up to me. This is their religion. And this is what they believe. Are you mental? You will not find one Muslim, he will not accept to say to you, Allah is the name of our God. It's not a word being God. Otherwise, Allah is the God of the Hindus too. Uh, otherwise, the one who worships Satan, they can call him Allah too. If the word God is God, if this is Allah, is mean God. So anyone have any God, he call him Allah in this case. No. You are just being a stupid fool. You are stating the Muslims are wrong because Allah, not the name. No, I never said Allah is not the name for Muslims. I said the original name, the, the authentic name, because Muslims are copying from Muhammad. Muhammad copy from the Arab. The Arab, they copy from the Aramaic. Allah is two words. A-L, which means God. La is the word, which is the name of the God. By time, the word Allah is connected. In the original Arabic, the original Quran, if we can find it, there is some, like a few, uh, uh, all the print, but far away from the original. You will see that the, the Quran, uh, they are not connected. Allah, the letters are not connected. So if you, if you look here, you will see as an example, in chapter 1, there is two words appear in the beginning, verse number one and verse number two. And I will highlight them. This is Allah here, but this is not Allah. But they look the same. What happened? Where is where is Allah? Here, the second one, it says, Lil Lah. Li Lah. Li in Arabic means two. La is the name of the God. That is the name of the God of the Muslims. La. It's in the front of you. The first one, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Al. La. Al is a word God. God La. In the name of God La. And then here, Alhamdulillah. La. He did not say the word God. He just mentioned the name. Alhamdulillah. So the second one contain a letter and the word. Let us type it in the screen. <clears throat> I will open my typer. Screen typer. All right. So the second word is Li la. I will type in Arabic first. 
actually uh, I can uh, hold on let me let me copy it as it is first all right I will copy it in the front of your eyes I will copy the word all right and then I will divide the word I will paste and then look what I will do actually let me pause the word first as it is and then I will divide it again the same exact word but I will separate the first letter from the rest of the look at this so lila li la The first letter, Li, is a word me uh, is a letter mean two. This is the first letter, two. And this is the name, La. This is the name of your God, Allah. Here, verse number one, Allah. And this is Lilla. What is different between them? This one here have Aleph in the beginning. This one does not have Aleph. So your God is La. Okay, my friend, Mr. Basim, you can you can text me in Skype if you want. I will call you. All right, my, I just open my Skype just for you if you want. And you know, there is tons of evidence that Allah is the Moon God. How we know? It's not because the Muslim they have a moon in the top of their uh, mosque no uh, but there is way more clear evidence even from the Quran let us see an example did God himself he's saying his guy name is God are you stupid or what Kark. I just saw you the verse saying I am Allah and you were saying to me he said he's God he said, I am Allah, the God of the world. You say to me, and you are asking me, did he say he is Allah? Are you mental? When Musa is getting close from the tree, Allah said to him, I am Allah, the God of the world. If the word Allah is not a name, he will not say, I am Allah. You see, in Arabic, you can say, I am God, like this. In, like in English, in English, you can say, you say, I'm God. No. In Arabic, you cannot say that. You have to continue, say something, what? So, this is why he says, I am Allah, this is my name. And then he describes saying he is what? I am the Lord of the world. Actually, he said, al alamin which means the word of the man and the genie. So you are just an idiot, you know, you are just, uh, you know, uh, being stubborn. But anyway, who cares if you believe or not? At the end of the day, every single Muslim, he will tell you that Allah is the name of the God of Islam. If I type right now, what is the name of the God of Muslims? And I will go to Muslim website. I will not open any website unless it's a Muslim website. Here we go. What is the name? of Muslim God that's it I will not go to any I'm not going to Wikipedia and etc or Inclopedia no you can go to any only just Muslim Muslim website only only you will see every Muslim saying that to you so you are mentally ill my friend 
you are just as stubborn with stupidity. Check them only in Muslim website. Don't accept any other website. The most important name, the, 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 the list, the rest are, uh, they call them attribute. This is not a Muslim, uh, this is a Muslim website. Ah, look at this one. This is totally false. Since Allah is simply that Arabic word for God, uh, and there is only one God, Muslim worship, the God of Noah and Abraham. Yeah, this is a very false article. Uh, here it says totally false. Is Allah the name of God? I don't know even if this is a Muslim website, but if it is, that would be even more funny. And actually, this is a great example website here. Uh, is this website? Why all other Muslim website they say Allah is the name of the God, and then this website saying the same because everyone try. To defend the the existence of Allah as a pagan God and make it just a word mean God, you know. I mean, all, all of those, it says the 99 names of Allah. What is the first one is Allah. All of those is 99 names. The first one is Allah. Names, not a word meaning God. Anyway, in place. The Muslims always, they try to come with a new trend. So since, like, uh, it's very well known that their God is La, uh, you know, let us try to say, no, it's not. And it's just a word meaning God. And even the Arab Christian, they use the same word. So we can get away from it. It, it doesn't work. Islam as a cult connected very much with the moon not only the moon you see the Muslims are not Allah is not the name of the moon God is the name of the cursed moon 